In this short video, I'm going to show you how you can use PowerShell's job management tools to manage long running tasks. Jobs can be used in remoting and they are very handy for automated scheduling. Let's take a look. So there are some times in computer programming, including PowerShell scripting, where you have a blocking call. That is a task that takes a long time and prevents anything else from happening on the thread you're working in. For example, this command will go out and fetch every item on the D drive. As you can see, it's taking a while to run and I can't do anything else. So this is not an ideal situation in many cases. What we want to do is we want to be able to send this off and perform this task asynchronously to do it in the background without being directly involved, being able to have our script continue to execute or being able to do other things on our UI thread. So like many programming languages, we can do that in PowerShell. And the way we can do that is just by starting a job. Now we can give our job a name to make it easier to refer to later. And then we're just going to pass it a script block. In this case, the script block is going to be that exact same command that we had before. Now you'll notice that as soon as we execute this, we get control back on our UI and we can continue to do whatever else it is that we would want to do. Behind the scenes, PowerShell has created a job for us. It's given it an ID number and we can see the status. Now we can get at any point the status of the jobs that are existing in our system. We only have one job and it's running, but it's begun to return data. So we can see that it has more data. So we're just going to get that job. In fact, we're going to get all jobs and we're going to stop them. And now if we do get job again, we'll see that it is stopped, but it doesn't say completed because we stopped it early and it does have data available. So what do we do with that data? That's happened on, on some other thread and we don't have those objects. So we want to get them and we're going to use that, those objects the receive job commandlet to go out and refer to that job that we named and say, give me back the objects that you've got. Give me the data on that job. And so when I do that, it will start to return the data that had been collected. Now, if I execute this again, you'll notice that now there's no data. And if I look at get job, the job is still there, still has the same status, but it doesn't have any more data available to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the job again, but we're going to give it a new name just to make it easier to refer to. And we're going to let it run and we can take a look at the status and we can see it's running. There's our first one, but there's our second one. It's running and it has some data. So we're going to stop all the jobs that are running. And now we'll see, we have two jobs in the stopped state, one of which has more data. So we have get files to with data waiting. Now, rather than just get the data back, I'm going to add the parameter keep. And that tells the system to keep the data available. So this is a kind of a side benefit on occasion for jobs. Now I can run that, run it again. And that set of objects that's been collected is still there and still available. So there are also occasions where you're going to want to do a couple of different things to that result set by packaging it as a job and using the keep parameter, we can actually access those results more than once. So keep that in mind as a benefit. When you're done with the jobs, it's a good pro good practice to remove them from the system, particularly if you're going to be using the same names over and over. You can also refer to a job by ID number. If I go back to get job, you'll see that each job has an ID number. So you can refer to the job by ID number, but a lot of times, because you don't know what that ID number is going to be when you're writing your script, we refer to it by name. So it's a good idea to clean things up when you're done. So we're going to execute get, um, get job with all the names that match our pattern, which will return both jobs. And we're going to pipe that into remove job to get rid of them. Now, when we do this, we'll see that we have no more jobs listed in our system. And in fact, if we tried to do something like retrieve data from it, we'll get an error because the job isn't there anymore. So there you have an introduction to the beginning of how you can schedule and automate things in PowerShell by using the job system.